I believe it's Proverbs 12, chapter 12, verse 11 through 20. Again, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11 through 20. And I hope you read uh, 1 through 10. If you have not read 1 through 10, catch up. Uh, so that's what we want this week. Proverbs 12, verse 11 through 20. And this time we have another song, another day journey. That'll be our next song and after that. We'll go to where we are. It's another day journey and I'm so
in this place. For all the creatures present in our absence. The beings, the present in our absence. And to our visitors, we welcome you to the house of bread. We thank God that you stopped by and you part of this worship experience. We trust you have been blessed in this worship experience and been touched, been strengthened, and encouraged in this worship experience. To the membership, we honor you. To you who are viewing, we honor you as well. Thank God that you thought enough of us to view us virtually. We thank God for you. Even the membership of Watts and Verse is not blessed you and you honor you as well. Good to see you, Mr. Evans. Good to see everybody in this yeah. yeah. service. Good to see each and every one of you. It's a delight to see each and every one of you in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. I won't hold you unduly. We are already have some church. Yes, we have. If you have a say, man. Yeah. You don't have to say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I got you. I hear you. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, verse number 8. If you go into the red, you're going to do fine. Mm. And Jesus is going to. Not Jeremiah. Will be green and will not 
be anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your deliverance, and all of your wonderful and wondrous blessings that you have restored up when we know people. Your bad blessing are for ourselves with our bad breath. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you mean to us, your people. We often take you back to us and we are to ourselves, we are always glad of that. God, open the ears of the hearers, our hearts of the receivers, that your word, your word, your word will fall on good and put them down. And for whose fruit in days to come. But I pray, God, I need you to be with me. Speak to me and speak through me. As I speak this, your precious people. Yeah. God, I pray you, keep me humble, obedient, submissive, and sensitive to yeah. your spirit and your spirit alone. God, I need you right now. Send fresh now from all time. That will encourage. Strengthen and ever lift your precious people. God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, my words, my thoughts, be your words and your thoughts. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, these blessings I ask in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And you go to Jesus and I pray and I thank you. Amen. To the first day of the end of the session, we have to Jeremiah. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not be anxious when I fear when he comes. His leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. The time that we will share with my brothers and sisters, I'm going to talk to you about what are you planted in? What are you planted in? We're in the spring and you've seen trees budding. Yes. Lilies coming up. <coughs> they have been planted previously in the ground. And now they are coming up or coming to fruition. Yeah. It is, once this is the season or the time for them to bloom and blossom. So I want to ask the question again, what are you planted in? Before I get to verse 7 and 8, and I'm going to go through 7 and 8, and I'll be done. Uh, Judah had messed up with God. You read from 1 through 6. Judah had seen and turned her back on God. And Judah was, I'm going to do Judah like this, was just beside herself and just did what she thought she wanted to do and thought what she, and she could get by with what she thought she could do. But God, let me say something. This person, person, God does not allow sin. God is patient. But after so long, God will, his patience will run out. With Israel, 
God's patience ran out with her. With Judah, God's patience was running out with her. But God, who Jeremiah says something in verse 7 that I think is very unique. If you still got to don't close your Bibles, I want you to walk with me. You walk through scripture. Keep your right devices open too. Let's walk through this together. I know it's going to project it. Watch me go with Watch verse 7. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Happy, the word blessed, it means happy. One of the definitions, definitions is happy is the man who trusts in the Lord. If you and I won't trust God, we can't be in doom and gloom. Because the Bible, that's against what the Bible just said right here. He said blessed, which means happy is a man who put their trust in the Lord. Let me say something to us. We're going to go through some stuff. Amen. We're going to go through some trials. We're not going to, because we're saved, we're not going to be exempt. We're going to go through because the Bible says, and the says, all that live godly must suffer persecution. <laughs> but the thing is, you got to be happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's be real. Sometimes we go through some stuff. It's devastating. It's all right. <coughs> and we don't, let's be real, we don't feel like being happy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you should the same, let me know. <laughs> I've been in church all my life. We go through some stuff that's devastating. Takes us for a loop. And we ain't happy. Excuse the grammar. We ain't happy. And let's be even better. We're right at the present time we don't want to be happy. Because we're dwelling on what we're going through and what's happening in our life at the present time. But I would mean, like to revert back to the late Bishop Ross and said, when you sit down and settle yourself. He would say that quite often. He said, shut up and set yourself. And once you settle yourself down, you will see your whole mindset and your whole demeanor change or shift. But evidently, evidently, he's encouraging the people to be happy in who you trust. Okay, my sister. Those who are rich, most of them, not all of them, most of them who are rich, they have it and they try to get more money. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. They have it. Uh -huh. And the only time they're not happy when they lose. All right. And then they're trying to figure out how to get that money back and some. And so if the sinner can be happy in his stuff, hmm. why cannot the saints be happy in who they serve? So here in Jeremiah, he's telling them, happy or blessed are those who trust in the Lord. But I like the second part. He says, the second part says this. I like this. Whose hope is the Lord. Yeah. The word hope in the text means whose confidence is the Lord. Or whose confidence is in the Lord. Not only that, but who trusts in the Lord. Well, I'm going to read the translation to y'all, which even makes verse 7 even clearer. Listen to this. But the person who trusts in the Lord is blessed. Amen. I want to kiss somebody. The person who trusts in the Lord yeah. is blessed. Amen. Amen. You cannot be blessed, I cannot be blessed until I trust Him. He said, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. But he said, the Lord, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going to ask you a question, but don't answer it. 
Because I got a house there. <laughs> the Lord will show him that he can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. I'm going to say that second one again. Mm -hmm. The Lord will show him that he can be trusted. Mm -hmm. This is the question I asked you when I said, just think about it. Has God not always come through to you and show you that he can't be trusted? All right. Thank you, Jesus. You and I don't say it, sir, Baal. Right. Who has eyes but cannot see. Who has hands but cannot touch you. Who has ears but cannot give you a crown. Has not God blessed you and answered your call when you needed him the most? You may have to wait a little bit, but he has come to your rescue. Yeah. Right. He has shown that he can, watch it, that he can be trusted. Yeah. This is like your neighbor, your friend, you know. They have shown that they can be trusted about how they have done some things in the past. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying here, I have shown you that I can be trusted. Mm -hmm. No doubt, no answer is about. And so since he has shown that he can be trusted, he goes at eight. He said, "Since you've done this, and if you, this cannot happen. Listen, this, this you cannot go into verse eight until you got to do verse seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it again. You cannot do verse eight until you do verse seven. Amen. You cannot receive verse eight until you do verse seven. Mm -hmm. You can't see yourself." In verse 8 until you do verse 7. All right. You cannot be all God intends you to be when you look at verse 8 until you do verse 7. Mm -hmm. What do I keep saying like that? Go. You got the bottom line is you got to trust God. Amen. No matter what it looks like, you got to trust Him. Yeah. No matter what it seems like, you got to trust Him. Amen. No matter what you're going through, you got to trust Him. Yeah. Psalms 34 and 19 says, Many of the afflictions yes. of the righteous. You ought, to, you ought to pat yourself on the back because I'm righteous, so I'm going to put you stuff. Right. Many of the afflictions, many of the trouble, many of the trials of the righteous. Mm -hmm. But don't stop there. Yes, don't stop the comma. Mm -hmm. He says, But the Lord, the conjunction word, yes, yes. but the Lord will deliver him out of him out. Every one of them. Not some of them, he said all of them. But you can't do that until you, until you do verse 7. Yes. Verse 8 says, when you trust him, when you really trust him, I mean really, 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 really trust him, in the midst of it, really trust him, he said this, for he shall be like a tree planted by the water. He shall be in the ground for him to grow, and he should be placed Firmly. You got to be consistent firmly. I'm telling myself about something. Years ago, I was planting flowers. This is it. I was planting flowers for Sister Ross. She had me take these seeds, plant these out there. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to get it over real quick, y'all. Quick, fast, and ahead. So I tried to not plant them deep. Just try to put them just a little hole in this stuff and get them. And, and, and hopefully she didn't see me, but she saw me. <laughs> she said, Raymond, you gotta get deeper. You gotta allow, you gotta allow the seeds to have roots. She said, there has to be depth. You can't do surface planting. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I want to say something to us. Uh, how deep are you? Yeah. Not that I said, but where are you planting? Mm -hmm. How deep are you in Christ? All right. Mm. He said, you should be like a tree planted by the waters. You should be per, 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 uh, firmly planted in the water. The water means, what does the water mean? The water means refreshment. 
every now and then when we go through some, some stuff, we got we to be refreshed. Amen. You and I have got to be refreshed because some of the stuff is very devastating and we need mm -hmm. refreshment. Just like an athlete, when he's, he's, he's playing whatever sport he's in, mm -hmm. uh, he gets to the point where he needs some electrolytes, mm -hmm. Gatorade, Powerade, mm -hmm. all those power drinks. And what those power drinks do is they bring about refreshment and bring back and bring up the electrolytes in the human body. Well, the water here spiritually is like the electrolytes in Gatorade and power aid and all those other power drinks. Listen, listen. He says that we should not be like you should not be like a shrub, but like a tree. Be like a tree, an olive tree. Be like a palm tree. Let me stop with the palm tree for just a minute. Have you ever, I don't know anybody here been in California or Florida, mm -hmm. but they have, they, I've been told, I don't know, I've just been told, that they have these palm trees, and, 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 and even when the wind blows, these palm trees are still, they may sway to whatever side, the right or the left, but they'll still be standing when it's all over. Mm -hmm. Because those plants have depth mm -hmm. in the ground, roots are strong, in the ground. And so whenever trouble comes, they will still, watch it, they will still be standing. They will still be fruitful and flourish because they're planted by the water. Well, not only that, but they also, the literally, this relates to the Christian. You got to be planted, planted in Christ. He, he, you should be planted in righteousness that is filled with the fruit of righteousness, Amen. not of wood that grows wild. I gotta say that again. Amen. Not of wood that grows wild. Amen. The tree is planted in Christ mm -hmm. and in the house of the Lord. Yes. And not only by means of engrafted word, but the gospel of God. You got to be in God and your roots have got to be spread in Him. Mm -hmm. Your roots have got to be in the root. It talks about the water. The next one, look at this. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. He said this. He says, <laughs> go out to the next part. He says, we spread its roots by the river. Mm -hmm. The word river means stream. Stream is a flow of water that constantly flows. Constantly. Doesn't it stop? A stream constantly flows. Water just constantly keeps flowing. It keeps going. Well, you got to have a steady flow. Your, your roots have got to spread out. They got to spread out. The roots is a source of strength. It is also a source of fruit. You have got to produce fruit spiritually. Watch this. I'm, going, I'm coming home. He says, and will not fear when he comes. All right. I want to camp real right here. Will not fear when he comes. Will not be afraid when the heat comes. Will not be afraid because, watch this, shall be the heat shall not affect the individual. Because he's planted by the river. He's planted by the stream. We want somewhere about this. The man who trusts in the Lord is not afraid of heat or persecution. The man, I'm going to say it again, the man who trusts in the Lord is not afraid of the heat of persecution when it comes, mm -hmm. nor is he hurt by it. Mm -hmm. He does not perceive it, but he keeps growing even the more. Oh, stop right there. Yeah. He grows even the more in the heat of persecution, in the heat of trial, he is growing even the more, or even getting stronger. Right. Mm. Because he's strengthened. He's stripping in the Lord because his roots are in the Lord. Oh, watch this. 
I know this one. This other one, this is this one. <laughs> his leaf, his leaf will be green. Now watch this. In the heat of persecution, he grows a little more. His leaf will still be green. When he said that, he says <laughs> that he was still keep his color. Because sometimes when the heat comes, the plant dries out. It loses its color. It turns brown. He said the cause of the plant or the tree is planted by the river or planted in Christ. He will still stay green. Even in the hot, hot time, he will still be green. In the time of persecution, he will still be green. He will still be green. And then he says, this next one, he says, and will not be anxious in a year of drought. You got the heat, and now you got the drought. You got a combination of heat and drought. You don't believe it. You got it. You got the heat that will, that will dry you out. And you got to know what will really dry you out. You got the heat and the drought. He says, the word, he used the word in the King, New King James, he says, anxious. First of all, I want to talk about this anxious right now. He says, really, this word anxious, don't you be concerned about the drought. In other words, he said, don't lose focus. Stay focused. You know what I told you a few weeks ago? I said, but I got it from uh, Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan says, focus and not finish. All right. This tree is focused on whom he's planted in. My eyes are not focused on the heat, nor on the drought, or no water. I'm still green in the heat. I'm still green. In the dry time, when there is no water, I'm still green. In the year, in the time of drought, I'm still going to be green. All right. Why? Because I trust in God. I depend on God. Yeah, yeah. I'm leaning on God. So therefore, in the drought, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not going to be concerned about the drought. I'm not going to be concerned about the heat. Because I know, come here, Paul. Paul says, I know in whom I believe. Why? Because he has proven himself in the past. He has done it for me in the past. Right. And he's not going to change because he's not a God and he's alive. Yes. Mm. When he's not doing it, he's going to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to tell somebody he's going to do it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Even in a drought, even in a dry season of your life, yes. God is still going to do it. When it looks like nothing is happening right now, it looks like nothing is flourishing right now, it looks like nothing is happening and no, there ain't any production at all, but God is still going to do it. In the meantime, while I'm waiting on God, I can go back and forth, I'm going to give God some praise. While I'm waiting on God to shift my situation, I'm going to still praise God. While I'm waiting on Him, I'm going to do something and not do nothing. I'm going to praise him, adore him, magnify him, glorify him, exalt him, because he's worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. I got to help, I got to help, I can't, I can't get away from this. I got to help a blind Bartimaeus spirit. I got to praise him in the midst of it. I got to lift him up in the midst of it. I got to give him glory in the midst of it. I am not going to be whipped inside. So there is going to be a shift. Because I know in whom I believe. I trust in God. I believe in God. I'm not concerned about this stuff going on right now. I'm concerned about God Almighty. Mm. The last part of the verse of scripture, I'm coming home, y'all. Listen to this. He says, No will cease from yielding fruit. This cannot happen until you do verse 7. Now verse 8 can happen until you do verse 7. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Yes. God is my hope. Yes. God is the restorer of my health.
God is the store of my strength. God is the store of my finances. I am going to wait on him. Somebody said, somebody said, so I don't mind waiting. Yeah, it, it, it tells you sometimes, but I don't mind waiting on the Lord. But he says, no will cease, no will stop from yielding fruit. The word yield means will not cease from producing. That's not it. I like this right here. He will not stop accomplishing, accomplishing what God says he's going to do. For him. For her. Yeah, you're going to still be producing. You're going to still accomplish what God has you to do and what he has for you. You're going to still accomplish. But the word fruit, the word fruit is a fruit means that uh, you don't have some results. You can't have results if you trust. Y'all can get that. You can't get no results until you trust him. You can't go by what you see. You can't go by what it looks like. Well, I heard Paul said in the writings in Corinthians, he said, we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Gary, let me, let me use you. I'm closing with this. I'm, I'm, I'm closing with this. Let me use you, Gary. Because Gary couldn't walk, I told you earlier. He couldn't walk. He had pain in his legs constantly. Constant pain in his legs. But when, let me not, just not use my safe time meditation here, okay? Thank you. While born in rehab, he felt like he couldn't walk. Didn't feel like he could walk. Didn't think he could walk. But watch this, you got to tell somebody who carries you. Y'all can hear me. Yeah. You gotta have somebody who truly will encourage you, who truly wants your well-being. So somebody at the rehabilitation place start to speak to Gary. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody, right here. Start to speak to Gary and start to motivate Gary. You can do this, man. And the walking and the trying and the running, probably I don't know. Gary didn't tell you, but probably every time he takes a step, it hurts. But the person who's with him, mm -hmm. yeah. the person who's encouraging him, you gotta have a coach, that's in that way. Yeah. You gotta have a coach, you gotta have somebody coach you along this journey. Yeah. So this first time I ever did it was coaching Gary. Gary take the next step. So Gary takes a step with the left leg and the left foot. Pain. But the woman says, Yeah, but you can make it, Gary. See, he takes, he says, go on do the next one to take the right foot and the right leg and place it down. In pain, but still move. Yeah. yeah. And still, I said, you gotta trust God All right. in the movement of a coach. Because the coach is helping you to move in the right direction. Yeah. He, the coach or he or she is giving you past what you going, what's going on in your life right now. Right. And so you need a coach to coach you. Yeah. Take the next step to the left. Watch this, I just called something, I just called something, that girl when it goes. He didn't really pick it up. All right. He drove it. Yes. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So he takes that left foot and he drags it. He couldn't lift it up, he drags it. But he's moving. The coach to now take the next step with the right foot. Drags it, but move it. All right. Yeah. So that's what we had for that day. Comes back the next day. Watch me. Same coach. Listen, we don't get no different coach. Don't switch them because they don't. They, then you might get the wrong coach has an attitude. All right. Help me stay with that All right. Because you gotta have a coach that is sensitive. All right. You can't have no nasty coach. No coach that don't care about you with your well-being and your rehabilitation to be where you're supposed to be. Kick that person to the curb. You need a real coach who's going to coach you and love you up. Now wait a minute. Thank you, Lord. They're going to motivate you, too. Now, sometimes you're going to say they mean. They ain't mean. They just motivate you. I'm sure you what I'm talking about. Help me teach this God. And so, 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 the second day, same coach, same 
editing, saving me, just loving and kind, but they, they got to be effective. You can be too loving and not effective. All right. So watch this. The next day, same thing as the first day. Third day, the same thing as the first day. When I say that, drag the foot. But now, the fourth day, it's a different thing. Watch this. I hope you just listen. He, she, the coach says, move the left leg and the foot. Dre, wait a minute. The coach said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. You did three days of dragging the foot. They gotta be, what's the there gotta be a different movement on the fourth day. So now the coach is saying, you cannot, the loving of the foot, you cannot. Drag it today. Right. You got to lift it today. Even if you don't lift it but two inches, you got to lift it. Right. What happens is that you strengthen the muscle in that leg and that foot. All right. So therefore, the mindset of the individual who's supposed to do it says, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. The coach in the front. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want to do it today. Yes. If you don't move it but two inches, you want to move it today. Yes. You can do this. You're going to do it today. Watch this. Let's be real. No. Shut it back. No. Shut it back. Lift it. Watch this. They didn't feel like they could do it. But the coach said you can't do it. Yes. Yes. Do the right foot. Mm -hmm. No. Slide it back. Slide it in. Go slide it back. It's all in mind, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta tell yourself you can do it. Man. Not only you gotta tell yourself you can do it, you gotta say, God, help me do it. Yeah. So now you're trying to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. The left foot was two inches. The right foot was three inches. Come on, come on. I can't do this. So you go through the same thing on the fifth day. But on the sixth day, the coach says, I need you to move it. Five inches. Grace.
It's new beginnings. I've got on eight inches to watch this seven days of rehabilitation. Through the night, you done talked to God. You done, you done all these different things for six days. Almost for the last week, y'all. <laughs> for six days, you done all these six days. But in the, in the midnight hour of the seven days, you done talked to God. God, give me the strength to move it. Watch this. When I'm in his train on this time. Seven is completion, I told you. So the next day to read half. Coach said, you can do this. And the coach even said this. And the, and the coach don't want you to talk to God. The coach said, I don't want, I want you to live today. I want you to stretch out. Watch it. Stretch out and literally walk. No. You may be in pain, but I want you to literally walk normal. Encourage the individual to walk normal on the seventh day. You may progress for six days. The right foot was eight inches in the beginnings. So now it's a new day, a new dawn, and a new accomplishment. So you say this thing, okay, I didn't pray last night, but you gotta pray. First of all, you gotta pray, you gotta read your prayer. Yeah. Two things, you gotta read your prayer and you gotta read who you were talking to. Yeah. Why do you were praying? Yeah. So therefore, the coach said you should be able to walk, maybe you have some pain, but you should be able to walk like you normally walk, but maybe you have pain. Mm -hmm. So now you tell yourself in your mind, and I don't pray last night, I'm trusting God. I got to step. I got to just step out in faith. I got to trust in whom I believe, and so therefore, he starts with pain. And all of a sudden, he starts walking on with pain. But as much as he keeps doing it every day, the pain leaves. All right. As he keeps praying every day for there be less pain. There be, I was saying, there is no pain. You saw how you walked this You saw how you walked. You saw how you walked. In time, God blesses. It's a progress. And you gotta, you gotta, and you gotta trust God in the process and the progress. For him to do it and to bring you out and bring you through. Well, I gotta close, I gotta take away them. I'm closing. Those were not in my notes. No one's Gary in my house. There ain't no Gary gonna be here. I got a takeaway. Takeaway. And I try to even put a bunch of line like you want to work with this program. I got a new line that I'll be on. So just work with me. The first good point is to trust the Lord, to trust in the Lord. Brings blessings. Yes. Yes. To trust in the Lord brings blessings. Yes. Mm -hmm. The second bullet point is to be planted in the Lord so you can flourish and be fruitful. Amen. The third bullet point is when the heat comes, persecution, uh -huh. or whatever the heat is, uh -huh. you can grow the more under it. Uh -huh. Because you trust him. The fourth bullet point. In a drought, you will be productive or produce fruit. Amen. Amen. Even in a drought, in a yeah. drought, you will still be productive and produce fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, you got you, you the translation? Verse 8, and I'm, I'm coming home, let's say the same. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I just thought that, that, that last part just got me. That last word point got me. You still be producing fruit. You still be productive. You still be wearing fruit. Thank you, thank but watch you. this. Watch this. Watch this from the New Living Translation. He says, "You gotta catch this." But I just, I just feel it right in my spirit right here. Ooh, they will be like a tree planted along the walk, river bank. Mm. Get, get it refreshed. Get it renewed with the roots that reach deep. Watch it deep in the water, into the water. Such trees 
you watch this. You gotta be like you gotta be like Such trees are not viable by the heat. It's gonna, it's gonna get hot. Amen, amen. You're gonna be in a heated situation. But he says, such trees, the trees that are planted in, the trees are planted in Christ. They're not bothered by the heat, nor worry by the long months of drought. Because mm -hmm. sometimes stuff don't go overnight. You don't, you don't get over it overnight. It's a process, yes, it's a yes. time. Yes. And so, therefore, he says, even the long months, you're not bothered by what's going on because. I know God's going to bring me out. Amen. I know God's going to see me through. I'm not bothered about it because I trust in the Lord. Yes. When I heard the old song, song Sister Teresa, mm. take your burdens yes. to the Lord. Uh -huh. Watch this. And the song said, and leave them there. Yes. The song does not say go and pick them up. He says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. It reminds me of the scripture when Paul and Peter says to Peter, he said, cast all your cares. And then they keep, I want to cast me. Throw all your cares upon Christ. For he cares for you. The Bible says in, in, in Psalms 55, 22, he says, cast all your burdens upon the Lord. For he, wants to, he will sustain thee. He will keep you even in the midst of it. He is a keeper. Come on, somebody. He is a keeper. He is a keeper. Oh, you must have a keeper. Y'all, he's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. He is a keeper. Even in times I felt I couldn't go any further, he kept me. Not only did he keep me, he still by me. Not only did he keep me, stay by me, but he refreshed me. And I felt that I couldn't be refreshed. And I felt that I couldn't be stricken. I felt I couldn't be renewed. He stood by me. He stood by me. Then, oh, yeah. watch the rest of it. I'm not, he says, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered about the heat. It doesn't affect me. But you know what he said? It doesn't affect me. Why? Because I have, what's, I have grown enough. Mm -hmm. That is right there. I have grown enough in God. I have allowed my roots to be spread out in the deep. Yeah. And I have grown while being with God. So what used to bother me don't bother me. What used to affect me doesn't affect me anymore. What used to get me going crazy it doesn't make y'all be going crazy anymore. I am now I'm starting by the start to mature me spiritually, you know, in the heat of the moment. I am not going to be affected by the heat. It doesn't matter anymore. It used to. I don't, I don't mature. God has matured me. What's the rest of it? What's the rest of it? You've the long months. The long months of the drought, I am still in his hands. Yes. Yeah, but not only that, he says the leaves will stay green. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to stay refreshed. Yeah. And I read this, and, and, and I'm going to tell you about the person. Even in the pandemic, I read that last part. He said the leaves, stay, they stay green. And I read this, and I read it before. When I read it again, and he laid on it between today, it came and he said, you got to stay with me. You got to trust me even more. And I'm going to cause your leaves what, what normally go brown or stay green. Amen. And because I, because you want, that's because you want to, yes. I'm going to do it. Yes. You got to have a made up mind. You got to have a determined mind that oh God, I want you to do something new in me. Yes. I want you to do a fresh thing in me. I want you to keep my leaves green. Help me stay focused. Help me stay in tune with you. And the stuff that around me goes around me does not bother me. Does not affect me. Keep me focused. And I'll still love me and still be green. Uh, and they will never, and I will never stop producing. I will never stop. I will keep on doing what you have me do. Because I want to stay green. I want to stay green in you. I can let stuff. I can let people. I can let things, I can let situations stop me. God keep me planted yes, yes. by the river of the water. Yes. I bless what he says in the same song. I shall not be moved. Yes. Old school song, old school song, old school song. I shall not be moved. Yes. Planted by the river of the water. Uh -huh. I shall not be moved. Uh huh, uh huh. I'm not going to give in, I'm not going to give up to my situation. I shall not be, I am present. 
in Jesus Christ. I am rooted in Jesus Christ. I'm grounded in Jesus Christ. I am renewed in Jesus Christ. Well, you may be. God bless you. That's enough. He's done. I'm done too. Well, you can be. That's just something. But see, look at this. We need to visit. We need visit this. These two verses. Revisit it. Because we're, as we are in a living season and a time of renewal, we need to ask God to renew us. What do you think does can affect us anymore? Because you got to be planted in Jesus Christ. You got to be planted in Him. And I mean truly planted in Him. I just thought, see, sometimes we just, we, we just, we just say stuff. We don't mean it, but we just say stuff. Because it sounds good to whoever we're talking to. But you mean, you, this ain't about sounding good to whoever we're talking to. This is about real spiritual renewal and spiritual walk with God. Too many stuff, too many things are happening. We don't know what's going to happen next. Too many things are happening. Yeah. You got a thing that happened in Atlanta. That's right. Yeah. 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 Shot and killed six women. Because they didn't like somebody. You don't know who don't like you. That's right. You don't know why. Amen. You don't know. And, it, and I'm going to say some old folks just say, and I'm going to school. They say, the least say it behooves you. To live holy for God and live for God like never before. Amen. You don't know what's going to happen next. You're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. This is the age we're in. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to happen. Amen. And it causes us and the who's us in the pandemic for over a, well, a year to even get closer to God. Yes, like never before, don't let nothing, don't let nobody. I told y'all, you don't last week. Last week before last, you came out of that. Joe can hinder you from love with God. Amen. I don't care what Joe says, says you, they love you and all that stuff. You cannot allow them to mess you up. Amen. You cannot allow them to distract you from walking with God right. in a determined mindset. You got to have a determined mindset. You got to. Can't let him or her mess you up. You got to on, keep on walking. Keep on walking with yes. God. And don't let nothing, the Paul said, what shall separate me from love of God? The persecution from, the violence, the negligence, the peril, the sword, the death, life, highest death. So let's separate no. You got to be determined that you let nothing separate you from the love of God. You got to be, listen to this, you got to be more focused than ever before. Right. Your mind has yeah. truly got to be made up. Yeah. Old folks say that my mind is made up. Yeah. You are really in the 21st century, your mind has really got to be made up. And I want to say this, you can sit in the station right now. You got to be determined where you're going to spend eternity. Yeah. And that's when you walk around and just don't, just don't care. Just, just don't care. And the pandemic makes it even worse. Yes, it has. They have gotten worse. Yes. Just don't care. But I want to say to those somebody, you better, you better make up your mind where you want to spend eternity. Yes. And I want to say this to old folks who say this, I don't want to keep going old school. They just say hell is too hot. Yes. And eternity is too long. Yes. Oh, I'm just going to die. No, you're going to, it's going to be more than die. Yes. You're, going to, you're going to be judged. Yes. And then you're going to be burdened forever. There will be no ice cream, there will be no fans, you will burn forever. And you want to feel it too. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But I love the picture that, that, that John, John Paul paints in Revelation that you, a place, streets of paper gold, all these fine rubies and all this stuff, you, you may not be rich and I never mentioned that. But if you keep on living right, heaven is yours. Yes, if you live right. No uh -huh. the old folk, old folk say, if you live right, you can't have any wrongs in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't have heaven until you live right. Amen. You can't have heaven until you're devoted to living for him totally. Oh, yeah. Not partially, not practical, but all the way. Amen. All or nothing. Amen. All or nothing. So true. I want to extend this invitation.
So even you who are viewing by way of uh, virtue, you may not know Christ as your personal Savior. But this is a time for you to know Christ for yourself. It's not a difficult thing. It's not a hard thing. All you have to do is ask God to give you of your sins and believe and He shall be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess your mouth, Reverend Romans said that, Paul said that, you shall be saved. You can be saved. And if you get saved that way, put it in the comment field. Let us know you got saved. And let us rejoice with you. Let us rejoice with you. And whatever you need, and you can even put it in the comment field, let's try to get it real quick. And the comment field, if you have a prayer request, we'll pray with you and pray for you. Yes. And is it the prayer request who are, who are here? In person? Okay, there are Antonio. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am.
in the name of Jesus. You encourage them and you strengthen them. But well, there are many that are discouraged and those who are uh, oppressed and depressed. But I pray you lift the load and the burden. You encourage them, you strengthen them in the name of Jesus. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. For your glory in your son Jesus we pray and we do thank you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Let me, let me make an announcement. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, right Are you grandsons? Okay. Most gracious and all wise Father. Yes. We come back to you and ask you to bless the Diane's grandsons. Touch their by them. Very honored and Antonio. Touch them with your touch their lives, God. That's what we need to do. Yes, touch their lives. Yes, Lord. Save them that they may know you as their personal savior. Oh God, oh God, touch God. Give them no rest, no peace till they confess you yes, as their yes, personal yes. savior. Yes, Move yes, by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Yes, we pray your protection by them as well, God. Yes, In the name of Jesus. Move yes, by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Yes, these blessings I ask in Jesus' name. I pray and I do thank you. Amen. Amen. My apologies. My apologies. Let me say this to us. Those who are getting your second shot, and I said it last week, I'm going to say it again today. I'll probably say it again mm -hmm, another day. Once you get a second, you are still to keep your mask on. Amen. And God said, it's good for you. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. This thing is not over, but we are supposed to do what's supposed to be done by the CDC. Amen. Yeah. And still wear them. Amen. Yeah. Still wear your back. Amen. Yeah. Go to Walmart, wear your back. Amen. Yeah. Go to church, wear your back. Yes. Yeah. Uh, go to, to the mall, wear your back. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. As I told you last week, I want you to stay healthy. Yeah. I want you to stay healthy. And we have been blessed. We have literally been blessed. Yes. Yes. We have been blessed. And I want to stay blessed. Amen. 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 So I'm going to be reminded you every now and then. Mm -hmm. Remind you, you got to keep these things on. Amen. It's for your health and the people you around yeah. health. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. Okay. Bless you, Stan. We'll let you go. Good to see you all again. God, to all of this, I trust you have got a nugget this morning from God's word, and you enjoyed yourself. Amen. And I invite Amen. you to come back in here. Amen. 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 Now to him that's able to keep you from falling, present you all for the presence of the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, best, and the leading power, both now and forever, that all God's people say. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and highly favored in the Lord. Rejoice.